back. It's been a little while after episode 10, but uh, we are finally back together after some conflicting schedules and different things, and the carcass is here, and we are ready to rock your world with a brand new topic today, but first, some shout-outs. My first shout-out goes to Mr. Jay Fuchs of Sound of White Noise. Uh, he puts out a lot of good, killer, local Dallas-Fort Worth uh, metal. Uh, Chemicost is one he just put out. Uh, killer killer thrash uh, uh, album and uh, he always has a merch table full of goodies vinyl CDs even tapes and t-shirts which kind of segues into our subject matter today it does we like goodies but I'm gonna shout out the great Rob McNeese down in South Texas um, I wore my uh, Witchfinder general shirt just for you buddy and one of these days we're gonna get you on so we can talk about uh, the Slayer interview and the shenanigans that went on around that back in, what, 83? Ooh, 84 Something, something like that? Yeah. Anyway, Rob's got a great story, and uh, so shout out to Rob McNeese, the great uh, Nawabum metal guy down in South Texas. So, our topic today, we're going to talk about what you want to see on the merch table. We've been to the merch table a thousand times over the years at shows, um, the room here is filled with stuff I've bought off of merch tables. So we'll uh, talk about first what you want to see, obviously, is t-shirts. What do you want to see on a t-shirt when you walk up to the table? Well, honestly, and that is the first thing that is my draw. If uh, Well, namely, I want to see if they have a copy of what I just heard, especially if they're a, like a small local band or someone I've never heard of before. Obviously, I want the music... And, uh, and interestingly enough, with all the downloading and whatever going on, sometimes the only thing available, uh, the, the, the only place you can get the CD is at the merch table. Mm -hmm. So it's a good marketing idea for bands that are trying to get their music out. But yes, the t-shirt is the big draw. Um, and I love a t-shirt with the front and the back, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's a statement, a lyric from a song, or tour dates are my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. So a, a killer logo doesn't have to necessarily be Full color. I love the black and white. That's very traditional. Um, but yeah, the T-shirt is is probably the first thing, and then the music is the second because I wanna, I want when people see me wearing that band, I want them to see, ask me about the band like, hey, who in the heck is Nazem, or <laughs> uh, what or Insect Warfare, and <laughs> right. uh, and and, uh, and no, Rob, I don't just listen to grindcore. Okay, we've had that discussion too, but. Yes, he does. What I'm saying is, is I want people to ask me about the band because if I believe them, believe in them enough to buy the, the shirt or listen, to, I want them to hear the CD too. Yeah, I like it. When I'm looking for t-shirts, um, obviously black t-shirts dominate. I like a good black t-shirt. I have a white Slayer shirt. Uh, I don't wear it too much because it's a white shirt, but. The black t-shirt with the logo, I love the logo shirt. The tour dates on the back are cool, but if if it's got the tour dates on the back and I don't like the artwork on the front, I will go for a just band, straight band logo t-shirt every time. I do like having a memento from the tour if it's got that tour mentioned in the dates and all that. Like you said, the music, man, it's really cool because a lot of the stuff you can get, you can't find anywhere else. Or maybe it's a little different version, or maybe it's a promo item. I do like uh, getting those. When we went and saw Hatchet a year or so ago, man, they had a great merch table. They had yep. tons of stuff. They, were ha they had pre-signed 8x10s, which honestly, I think that's a cool thing to do because it saves time and it's easy but to be honest with you, I'd rather it be blank. I'd rather them sign it as I'm there, and and I'm sure they would personalize it. But man, they had vinyl and CDs. They had killer shirts, man. Those full color shirts they had were awesome. Um, what are some other things that you like? Well, uh, now that you mentioned that, they they were selling a tour only colored vinyl too. That was the only way you could get it was to go to the show. I know a lot of bands are doing that. They have something that's a splatter vinyl or, or a colored vinyl of some sort, not just your traditional black colored vinyl, um, or tapes. Mm -hmm. That's another one. I know when I saw Primal Fear back, uh, in fact, um, I was going to say I just uh, reconnected with Havoc. They're on a tour down in South America. 
they were on tour with Primal Fear as a three-piece, which is a whole interesting story as it is. Maybe someday we can have Dave talk about that. But uh, Primal Fear had a CD-only, tour-only, uh, live CD. That's cool. And it was, and it was, uh, they had taken like the first five shows of the tour, made a CD, and that was that's what they were selling. And that's that was awesome. the only way to get it. Uh, was to actually go to a show and buy something, right. which I am a total advocate of, as we've discussed before. Sometimes that's the only way the bands can put put fuel in the tank and food in their stomach is if you're buying something from them. So yeah. um, as much as I'd love to say, buy the ticket, enjoy the music, and go home, maybe one less beer and one more T-shirt would be better. <laughs> that's right. One of the things that I like, too, um, is a variety I like the patches, I like the buttons, uh, stickers. I, I like the bottle openers, stickers are cool. Again, with stickers, I like just the logo of the band. If you could see in the room here, which you obviously can't, some other things that are cool is they've started selling, or at least I've noticed it in the last few years, um, stage used drum heads and, and drum sticks, I've got a few of those. Um, some guitar picks. If you can catch one, that's great. If you can get one from the stage, that's awesome. But I like when they have those available too. And man, there's just so much stuff out there now. When I was at Slayer, I got a belt buckle. Um, man, there's just so much cool stuff. The I think the thing that I buy the least probably would be stickers. And after that would probably be koozies. I see a lot of koozies mm. out there, yeah. and I don't really, I don't really buy koozies that much. I, I start, think? I started getting, I started buying koozies when, um, just because I thought they were different, and I, if I already had, like, it started with kind of with Dead Rising, a local band here that that went on about ten years, and then they've since retired, but, uh, and, but they had given me a couple of koozies, and I thought these are kind of cool, and then the next time I saw them after their kind of uh, hiatus. They had more koozies, and I thought, I'm going to buy one of those um, because I had already purchased everything else. Right. So it was just another thing I could buy, and I wanted, and I didn't want, the, you know, uh, sometimes when you give a band something like I saw Cloudcatcher a couple weeks ago from Denver, Killer Killer, three-piece rock and roll, uh, uh, masters of, of psychedelic rock, but uh, I, I wanted to just give them something because I knew they were driving back to Denver the next day. But instead, they felt like they needed to give me something, so they gave me a koozie and a pick and, and yeah. a sticker, which was cool. Right. And um, and and so, I, I don't mind the uh, I, I don't mind the koozie as much. Um, I know that some bands even go so far as to have women's panties. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and uh, and I even have a funny story about necrophagists, but we can save that for another day, maybe. <laughs> but uh, um, but anyway, I, I mean, I think that if there's a market, if you can figure out what the current market is i mean hoodies jackets uh, mm -hmm. uh all those are seasonal items long sleeve mm -hmm. shirts which i really dig but i don't buy that much of because we live in right. well we live in hell it's texas it's <laughs> super hot uh, most of the year it's very metal here. <laughs> uh, but you know i see drumsticks i see uh used uh, i see head drum heads with the mm -hmm. autographs on them i think all those are kind of cool ideas glasses i have some, like an angel etched glass that's Signed by the band, which is really cool. Oh, cool! And uh, and so and so somebody was thinking outside the yeah. box, and uh, and in fact, uh, our our buddy Poser Mark found a a uh, a guitar from Cinderella that was like a flat that had the CD in it that he got Tom Kiefer to sign, but it was something that was so limited that you know you had to go to a show to buy it, and he just happened to find it at at Doc's Records when on one trip up here but uh that's cool but anyway i think merch is a it's a great way to advertise and people are paying you to advertise your product <laughs> but but the fact of the matter is is when the times i've run merch usually after the after the band plays is when you get this mm -hmm. groundswell of, of business right. i remember uh turban north at mayhem fest a few years ago and uh I sat there for an hour, and it was crickets, and as soon as they hit the stage, we did four or $500 in the, the next hour of merch, because people were, were duly impressed, and they should have been. That was one of the best sets I'd ever seen them right. play. I've, I've got a couple of cool things that I like that some of the bigger bands have done. Obviously, if you offer a VIP 
situation of some sort. It comes with a laminate, and I've got some laminates hanging up here in the room that I think are pretty cool. Kisses was 3D, and, you know, the Saxon one has several different uh, album covers that they were supporting on that tour. Uh, so that was pretty neat. But when I saw Tom Petty, not exactly metal, but uh, he had an oversized shot glass with the 40th anniversary heart on it, and I thought, man, that was really cool. I'll get that, because I like what's called shelf sitters. Mm-hmm. A t-shirt is very cool, and that's probably the number one merchandise item of all time, uh, outside of album sales or whatever. But I'm talking about sitting on the merch table. T-shirts are number one. There's no question. But some of these shows, man, I just can't pay fifty or sixty bucks for a t-shirt. So I got the shot glass, and I found out later that you could go to his website and you could put in your ticket information on what row and seat you had and what section, and then. For ten bucks, they would send you a pair of your seat, and it was 3D, and it had the 40th anniversary logo on the back. And I, huh. I got a couple of those. That was pretty cool. And another thing that I really like is if you want a memento from the show where you were, if the band is doing the CDR of the show, get it. When I saw Kiss in 2009, my son and I went. It was his first show. And they had a deal where you could pay, I don't remember, it was 20 or 30 bucks, yeah, I think. 30, maybe, I, think maybe, was, I think it was $30. Maybe. But you left the venue with a double disc folder, and disc one was already in there by the end of the show. And there was a piece of paper, a round piece of paper. You sent it in. It had a code on it or something. And they mailed you back the second disc because it wouldn't be ready by the end of the night. Right. That is stinking cool because... You're only, there will be a few hundred, maybe a few thousand sold that night, but it's the show where you were, where they talk about your town, and if anything strange or crazy happens, you know, you've got that recording. Now, right. I've, only, I've only got a couple of those, and I don't even remember the other one, but Kiss did it, and of course, the kings of, <laughs> the kings of merchandise. Yeah, of course. Gosh, mm-hmm. they'll stamp their logo on anything, but they got my money that night. I did not buy a shirt. I bought that disc, and I'm extremely glad to have it. My son was lucky enough to get um, picks from all the guys. Even the drummer uh, had picks that he was tossing out and uh, got a set of drumsticks from Eric Singer that night. Which is kind of weird. While I had my head turned. Which which is cool because even when the drummer even has a pick, in fact... I, I think I told you about the time we saw Priest up in Al, at the Allen Center, mm-hmm. and my friend Mike Spears, shout out to Mike, um, uh, said, if you'll just wait around for a minute, I, I got a special treat for you, and and uh, out came the Halford entourage, and he walked over, and he put a Rob Halford metal god pick in my hand, That's and awesome. and automatically I had guys bidding on it, like it was <laughs> some sort of an auction. Of course I'm not going to give that away, even no. though the guy next to me wanted to no. Give me three hundred dollars. No. no, it's not going to happen. That's 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 my memento. So yeah. But getting back to your point on the shirts, I think I was telling you before we had we opened up the discussion here. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of Tesla till I saw them on Sunday, and uh, with with uh, I talked him into it with uh, Joan Jett <laughs> and Sticks, and that's a whole different uh, discussion. The new sti- the new version of Sticks, but. Uh, I wasn't a real fan of them. I knew of them. I've heard the hit songs on the radio, whatever. But when I walked in and looked at the merch, the giant merch wall that they had there at the Toyota M- Music Pavilion, which is really an awesome place, which is kind of the new wave of what's happening. They have big and small venues all in the same area. But the Tesla t-shirt was so cool that I almost bought it blindly just to have it because graphically, and I look at things differently because I, I guess I am sort of artistic, uh, not autistic, like they'd say in New Jersey, but you're I'm, an artist. It's I'm, okay. I'm artistic, <laughs> and uh, but I almost bought it just purely on the on the on the on the graphic that it, itself. And then when after I heard them play, I thought, dang it, these guys are pretty good. I've been missing out, mm-hmm. and so I went out and found mechanical mechanical resonance, and I, I had buyer's regret because I didn't actually pay fifty dollars for a T-shirt. Yeah, and and so and you were you were talking about. Buyer's regret at the merch table, so maybe you could segue into that. I have had missed opportunity, merch table regret, and so I'll tell a quick story. We did a Pantera episode a few episodes ago, and one of my merch table regrets was in 1988 up in Denison, Texas. 
I had a chance to buy an original power metal CD. And I didn't have five bucks to get it. And I didn't get it. I should have begged. Did you have money borrowed. for beer, though? I was, no, I was 16. No, oh, I was okay. 18. All right. I didn't, All right. no, no, no. I, we were not drinking. We were That's underage. the worst reason not to buy merch. Well, I'm saving it for my last beer. No. You can get beer cheap. Buy man. a t shirt. <laughs> yes. So I remember walking out the door past the merch table, and I don't remember anything else that was on the merch table. I, I really don't remember anything, but my memory is walking out and walking past, and they had a CD hanging on the wall somehow. They had I don't remember if it was in a long box or one of those clear plastic things, but I remember seeing it up there, five bucks, and I was so filled with regret. I just, I walked away, there was nothing I could do, my buddy didn't have any cash. So, 30 years later, you found one. I popped off on Facebook about a power metal cassette that I had just come across, which made the second one in my collection, and the poser ended up with one of them. So I, I'm back to one. But anyway, my buddy Craig out in Vegas, Craig Small, chimes in on the thread and says, I have one. And so I start quizzing him. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it a real one? Sure, man. It's probably a bootleg. And he's like, no, I bought it that night at that show. So it turns out, I didn't know the guy at the time. We've been friends for a long time now. But he was at the same show. He bought the CD. We made a deal. Uh, I sent him some original Pantera vinyl. So it wasn't $5? For that CD, it was not $5. <laughs> but shout out to Craig for hooking me up. Yes, and as sir. a matter of fact, just hang uh -oh. on. Just hold uh -oh. on, hold on. Oh, no, you know what? He's digging into the collection. It's locked up. Oh. It's locked up. It's on Sorry. lockdown? I've only got three or four things that I keep actually in the lockbox, and that's one of them. But it's hard to tell the bootlegs from the originals, but if you do a little digging on Discogs, and as soon as I got this thing, or actually as soon as he started sending me pictures of it, I knew that we had the real deal. Did a light descend from heaven? Oh you my gosh! Of, oh my of, gosh! And like angelic choirs. <laughs> that was the that was one of the happiest collecting moments since I've been collecting. You know, since high school it was just I couldn't believe it showed up. And the other thing that made me panic was he just he put it in just a bubble mailer and stuck it in the mail. And I, and I was checking the mail every day. And then one day, there it was. Oh, Las Vegas. Like, oh, my gosh. I was wanting it to show up in an armored car, of course. Of course. And, of course, it was fine. You know, it showed up perfect. And the CD didn't even look like it had been played. He had taken such good care of it. And the inserts were correct and all that. So, Well, isn't that kind of what the intrigue of merch is, though? Is it? It means a lot to us, and in what are they? You know, I use the old adage from Indiana Jones. You know, I buy a pocket watch on the street corner for five dollars, and I put it in, and it's and that's all it's worth. I put it in the ground for a thousand years, and it becomes invaluable. Right. So, what is it really worth to us? And obviously, to your buddy, you know, it was a Pantera CD. I mean, yeah. I, honestly, if I ran across a, let's say, what what is it? Uh, uh, the, Projects in the Jungle cassette mm -hmm. by Pantera, I, I would, if it didn't cost me hardly anything, I would just give it to you. <laughs> right. Because to me, it doesn't mean I anything. Mean now, I know that it, it would mean the world to you. You would be yeah. you would be trying to, to move the Brinks truck up to the yeah. Casa de Carcass. But, right. but to me, it, it, it's kind of about perspective, I guess. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. Interestingly enough, well, that that's my merch table regret, man. You never know what you're gonna miss, and that limited stuff that the bands do, take advantage of it, grab all you can. Like Carcass said earlier, man, it's another tank of gas, it's another meal, um, it's another few dollars in their pocket to keep doing what they love. And let's face it, even some of the big boys aren't making much money. No. So please support local music. When you go to a concert, I don't care if it's the biggest band in the world or the smallest band in the world, hit the merch table, buy something, uh, hit the tip jar, do something. You got any closing thoughts no, on that? No, uh, other than just that. I mean, having having worked uh, merch tables before, having driven bands around, um, man, it's it, it, it may look glamorous on paper, it may look glamorous on MTV back when they were actually a music channel. Yeah. Uh, but but let me tell you what, man, it, that is hard hard work, and yes, uh, 
and and those guys deserve every every penny. In fact, n- n- uh, talking about Cloudcatcher, these these friends of mine, they uh, they I they they're from Denver. I looked all over the Denver record stores looking for their their music. They didn't have one. I contacted them on Facebook and said, "Look, dude, I looked everywhere for your record. I can't find it." He goes, "What's your address?" And I told him, and he just all of a sudden magically a record shows up. So you can better believe when they come to town, and I and they rarely are here, which was uh, it was a real luxury at a place called the the Tin Panther in Fort Worth. I didn't even know where that was, but it was a pretty cool yeah, joint, and uh, and some pretty cool bands played. Um, but anyway, you can better be be sure that I took care of them, just like you said, mm-hmm. because they literally were on their last. They were on fumes. They were on their last tank of gas, and I encouraged everybody that I knew there, and even people that I didn't help these dudes out, watch them play, and they're going to rip your head off. And sure enough, people were like, holy cow, you were right. And, mm-hmm. um, and they got back to Denver in one piece, so that's, that's awesome. Yeah. But, but, man, it's just like you, I mean, no, none of us will want to work. For, we don't go to our jobs for free. No. We expect, then, if we have to work over, overtime or we do a little extra be, uh, better of a job, of course, we expect a tip or some sort of recognition. That's how you do yeah. it at the merch table. Yeah. You buy their stuff. Help out the guys, go to the shows, pick up something off the table. Tell us what you think about merch. Are t-shirts your favorite? Maybe you like coasters. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Posters, CDs. Do they have coasters? I said coasters, co- I yeah. Said, I said coasters. Yeah, no, I've seen coasters before. <laughs> okay. I, have a, I have a Flogging Molly, I have a Dropkick Murphys. What is with the Irish yeah. rock bands yeah. that want to, anyway. Collect all six coasters and make the set, kids. Oh, I have a Kiss coaster set. Ah, there you go. There you go. There's well, they're, but they'll put, their, yeah, they'll, yeah. they'll put their name on it. Anyway. They'll sell you toilet paper. They'll sell I have, you I have air. that too. They'll sell you air in a bag, air guitar strings. Oh, that's right. Which I almost bought. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped myself. Because it's funny. It's funny. It is I get funny. that joke. All right, guys. We will see you next time. Thanks to the carcass for uh, coming in today from down south and making a new episode. We'll be back soon. And until later, metal, metal will prevail. prevail.